Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So who remembers this dolt from yesterday? Ben McKenzie, guys, former C-list actor turned professional complainer Ben McKenzie gets refuted by a dude that read 20 pages of the Bitcoin standard. He was trying to school us. Yes, the crypto community. And uh, as it ended up, Squawk Box host Joe Kernan pretty much put him in his place. Listen to this. Tom Leon, earlier this, he's great, smart guy. Stock analyst thinks Bitcoin's going to 200,000. So we have, you know, Kathy Wood, um, BlackRock uh, wants to have a an ETF, uh, Fidelity, Charles wait, wait, Schwab, wait, 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 uh, just... Paul Tudor Jones, as long Stan Druck and Miller. Sure, sure. And just across the board, it didn't take me long to understand how the unbanked could benefit from this. And I also understand the distributed ledgers, and I understand it, it was only, I, I mean, I didn't, you say you did a deep dive, and it only took me about 20 pages of the Bitcoin standard to understand that this was probably something that, do you think, Black, so, you think so all these firms are going to have egg on their face? So it's going, it's a democratized, to, decentralized future of money is brought to you by BlackRock? I don't know. Black, they, maybe. They may, I mean, if, if, if they think it's uh, gold, if they think it's you know, oh, that's it's why I was, yeah. digital gold. Right, exactly. And that's why I was explaining the difference between uh, no, I heard that, but and so scarcity. A lot of smart people are... So are fooled by it. You think it's going to zero eventually? No, that's that's like a, I mean, look, Where do you it's think a it's story. It, I, I can't predict the future any more than anyone else, but I you would say this. You think it's going lower? Yes. Okay. It, it, do you think eventually there will not be something called Bitcoin? It's a story. It'll last as long as people believe in it. I think Joe Kernan uh, did a good job of taking the wind out of his sails there. Now, some people in the comment section yesterday were saying uh, that this guy is an actor, which gets me thinking, I mean, maybe controlled opposition. We know BlackRock is, uh, you know, one of the leaders. They recently said they were getting into Bitcoin. And so perhaps some controlled opposition, things that make you go, hmm, remember, guys, they do not want us to get rich. The other clip I wanted to show you guys was from a couple of days ago. Kathy Wood says the bull case for Bitcoin is $1.5 million per coin. This one courtesy of Rob Art here on Twitter. Listen to this. Uh, we went to a bear base and bull case. So our bull case is, I think it's $1.5 million. The base case uh, is six hundred and. I think it's 625,000, something like that. Now, one reason we've actually internally, our confidence has increased towards the bull case mm -hmm. is because of what happened during the regional bank crisis in March. What happened? Bitcoin, so as regional banks are going bankrupt and, and the stocks are imploding across the board for the KRE, uh, Bitcoin rallied from 19,000 to 30,000. Why did that happen? That was a flight to safety. That is the insurance policy that we are talking about that we believe everyone will want at the end of the day. Insurance policy against two things, uh, confiscation of wealth, either directly uh, or by inflation or uh, in the deflation world, what is the what is it a hedge against? Right. It's a hedge against counterparty risk. Uh, we won't do. We won't have an 0809 with Bitcoin. Everything is decentralized and transparent. No obfuscation. You tell them, Kathy. So this was originally tweeted out by Lunar Crush, uh, but then retweeted out by Rob Art here. The crazy part is, as Bitcoin climbs higher, new market participants will flood into crypto and buy the top as they wait for the 1.5 million price target. Does this sound familiar, guys? Laser eyes, we're already seeing XRP hitting higher trading volume than Bitcoin on some exchanges. This one from XRP Crypto Wolf. The XRP token has reportedly overtaken Bitcoin as the cryptocurrency with the highest trading volume. And this is uh, obviously because of the legal victory that Ripple saw last week. XRP has dominated 21% of all cryptocurrency trade volume. And guys, it shows in the charts. Keiko Data here tweeted this out. XRP has surpassed Bitcoin as the highest volume asset since last week's ruling. 21% of all crypto trade volume has been in XRP. And they posted a little chart here. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. You can see XRP over here at 21%, a smidge over Bitcoin at 20%, Ethereum at 8%, and the rest of all coins at 51%. So XRP guys taking the lead, at least according to Keiko data. And although we have seen a bit of a retracement, we are still in very, very good shape. Nick here on Twitter posted this, the stage is set and the world is watching. XRP is defying all odds. Panic is setting in to those who expected a loss. 
2 million XRP is being traded per minute. And the other day I, uh, I showed you guys this graphic uh, demonstrating all the XRP that was coming specifically from the US dollar into the United States. At the time of this uh, screen grab, XRP was trading at about 82 cents. It has since cooled down. We're going to get to the chart in a second. Patience for the XRP community is paying off and in my opinion will continue to. We are number one guys trending on coin market cap and trading volumes have been surging ever since the case announcement happened. I think I speak for every holder when I say LFG and I think you guys can guess what that means. So we got the XRP chart up here right now. XRP is trading at about 79 cents. So I've got it here on the weekly. Let me throw it on the hourly so you guys can see uh, the action a little bit better here. XRP on the hourly yesterday. We were talking about this bullish setup. Another uh, smaller Nike swoosh pattern. We'll take a look at that guy since yesterday's video. We did see XRP really take off and make a newer high up here. So XRP did hit that mark up here at uh, about 81.8, so almost 82 cents. So we're still vacillating in that channel here, the 72.5 to 94.5 cent range, right? So we got to break through this resistance here. Uh, and so if once we break through this uh, band, this yellow band, and finally make higher highs for XRP, well, it's anyone's guess how high we can go next. I mean, we've got some predictions uh, which I'm going to get to in a second. But I mean, this is really uh, interesting. It's interesting to see XRP in this setup. And the fact that it's happening not concurrently with a bull run, I think is very interesting and very exciting. So we did see XRP, uh, you know, make new highs. We did see XRP come back up. Uh, however, now it has retraced a little bit. So you guys can see that there, XRP. Uh, right now trading at about uh, 79.2. So almost back up to that 80 cent range. We did see quite a retracement down. Of course, uh, we are still making higher highs on the micro time frame. I guess we should probably look at Bitcoin too to see what Bitcoin is doing right now. Nothing too exciting for Bitcoin. It did dip down below $30,000 yesterday uh, and now it's back up to about $30,000. So uh, similar to where we saw it yesterday at $30,008. Now it's trading at about $30,003. So again, nothing too exciting for Bitcoin. XRP is clearly carrying the market. And I think higher highs guys are in the cards. Uh, it certainly does help that XRP is being relisted on many major exchanges. And uh, I know even though some of these exchanges were never in the US, they are making moves and relisting or listing XRP. This one from XRP Crypto Wolf, a major European crypto exchange has just listed XRP in a significant development for the community. Liechtenstein based European exchange LCX has announced the addition of XRP to its trading platform. Starting July the 20th, so if you're watching this video on the day that I'm dropping it, this would be tomorrow. XRP enthusiasts can now engage in trading the token against three pairs, and those three pairs are USDC, the euro, and the LCX native token. And so uh, we got the official announcement here from the LCX Twitter account. XRP token will be listed on the LCX exchange. Mark your calendar, guys. Thursday, July the 20th, 2023. LCX is a compliant and regulated next generation exchange, uh, and they've been making waves in the industry. The platform proudly boasts approvals for nine blockchain registrations, a testament to its commitment to offering a diverse array of blockchain services. Founded in 2018, LCX uh, has rapidly established numerous partnerships from any Mocha brands to the prestigious World Economic Forum. Wow. Looky, looky, looky who is partnered with LCX. And guys, they are now listing XRP. So wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for pointing that out. On the legal front, been keeping tabs on this. I'm seeing more positive momentum here too. Representative Richie Torres tweeted this out regarding his maybe relative, maybe not. <laughs> Judge Annalisa Torres' decision in the Ripple case establishes what I call the Torres Doctrine, rejecting SEC Chair Gary Gensler's indiscriminate assault on cryptocurrencies. And he did talk about it here. The Decrypt News Outlet did point this out. Torres, and that's Richie Torres, has escalated his criticism of the SEC for failing to issue any clear guidance to the crypto industry, even after the agency lost their legal battle with Ripple Labs on multiple fronts. Guys, here's a quote. Regulation by enforcement had a dreadful day in court, Torres wrote in an open letter to SEC uh, Chairman Gary Gensler on Tuesday. His framing echoes his longtime criticism of the SEC's approach to crypto from both industry leaders and fellow Congress members. Last week, we know the judge gave the ruling. That's when we started seeing XRP price pumping. He goes on to say, though, down here, Judge Torres has made it crystal clear to the SEC that digital assets are not securities in the abstract and that it lacks the legal authority to regulate digital assets untethered from an actual securities offering. On Monday, Gensler said he was disappointed. Oh, muffin. In the judge's ruling, and the commission is looking at it and assessing that option. However, Torres asserted that the SEC's odds of scoring an immediate appeal on the ruling are vanishingly small since some issues in the case 
will require fact finding, which takes time. So this is what Richie Torres is now coming out and saying, guys. He also posted this, uh, the letter. So I will link this in the description if you guys are interested in reading the full letter. Uh, needless to say, regulated digital assets through enforcement only had a dreadful day in court in the wake of the resounding decision uh, of the SDNY Ripple case. The SEC must reassess its continued assault on the crypto industry. Thank you, Mr. Torres. Thank you. Warren Davidson even came out. I joined my colleague in calling for Gary Gensler to embrace a different approach. The Ripple case should make it clear that Congress needs to provide clarity that is lacking for investors, innovators, regulators, and even the courts. I remain hopeful that we can agree on the digital asset market structure bill that will do this appropriately and swiftly. So retweeting out uh, Representative Richie Torres' original tweet here. Again, guys, I will link all this in the description of the video. Meta Lawman here also coming on, noticing that there are very few attacks on Judge Torres' decision uh, from Congress, which is really interesting considering, uh, you know, they Congress, I mean, as we saw uh, over the last few months, Elizabeth Warren's a great example of this. Congress has been very critical of crypto, uh, you know, even to the point where Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler were colluding and, uh, you know, sharing questions and answers with each other to uh, provide at that hearing that happened months ago. So he says, no mean tweets from Senator Warren, no apparent mobilization of the anti-crypto army, no scathing editorials in the New York Times. But this makes sense. And here's why, guys. Okay, Judge Torres is smart and has the credentials. Harvard undergrad uh, in Columbia Law. She served as a Democrat-appointed New York State court judge for years. Both her father and grandfather were judges and served in the New York State Assembly. And importantly, Judge Torres was appointed to the federal bench by Barack Obama. So uh, she is through and through a Democrat. And, uh, you know, the Democratic Congress members, they have to play this very, very carefully, I'm assuming. So he goes on to say this has all helped to lower the temperature around the important ruling. Nobody believes Judge Torres is out there to help crypto bros, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted a fair ruling here. She just applied the law without fear or favor. Well done, he says. So 801 Crypto says exactly. A lot of these attacks are usually run by someone with Bitcoin in their bio. And the space they hold uh, where people are tuned in and listen, they speak about the Ripple case and how it's a security half the time uh, and not the other half. Don't make sense. They're spreading this half ruling and not mentioning how she came to the conclusion and proceeded by saying she's wrong, sloppy, etc. Then believe other federal judge will overrule her decision. Uh, she rules with the facts she was provided, uh, looked at every fact in and out, then decided as it was a trial and rules like a trial judge don't attack her for doing her job right. Some words of praise here from 801 Crypto. Of course, this does bode well for crypto in the US. Jeremy Hogan uh, mentioning this, love or hate the Ripple decision, it has absolutely demolished Chair Gensler's position that no crypto legislation is necessary, and he retweeted out this from Ron Hammond, okay? Delving a little deeper into this, this week in Congress and crypto, as of right now, the stablecoin and market structures bill are slated for a vote in the House committees next week. A lot of back and forth behind the scenes, but the Ripple case has made a huge impact on the politics of the bills, and here is why. Off the bat, the SEC has put senior Democrats in Congress in a weaker negotiating position. While the case wasn't a full win for Ripple, it has significantly weakened the SEC's arguments and legislation wasn't needed and the SEC never lost a crypto case in the courts. So the Democrats' position on legislation wasn't always a no. In fact, during my time on the Hill in 2018, senior Democrats, and then he named some, Maxine Waters, uh, Sherrod Brown, met with Warren Davidson and me to discuss legislation uh, to regulate crypto and they said it was something they all agreed it needed to be done. That position on legislation flipped, though, in 2022. So we're getting a little bit of insight here from Ron Hammond. Uh, I remember 2018 very clearly. I was here in 2018, and we thought, okay, during the next bull run, this is when we're going to see the regulatory clarity, and they're all going to jump on board. And, uh, you know, by the next bull run, by, you know, 2021, we will see the regulation. Of course, that did not happen because the narrative flipped. And here's what happened. Uh, it flipped in 2022. It was largely SEC-driven. It is common for Congress to rely on regulators, especially when they are the same party as they are subject matter experts. Uh, when Gensler pivoted from his 2021 position on legislation, so did the Democrats. So they all kind of followed Gary Gensler's lead here. Uh, this is why the market structure legislation seems largely Republican-led. However, the Ripple case changes this. Some hate the outcome, others praise it. Regardless of one's takeaway, there is a common theme of confusion after the fact, and legislation is the only clarifying force. 
Unlike the stablecoin bill, there is no Republican version and Democrat version. There's just the draft from uh, Patrick McHenry and Congressman GT, who is Glenn Thompson, as Democrats didn't think this legislation was needed after being told by the SEC. Now there are clear regulatory gaps, but Republicans need Democrats if they want this done. This is when the politics come into play. So guys, this is a game. You know, we think, uh, you know, it can't be, uh, you know, clear cut if people just listen to each other and maybe, you know, come to a reasonable. No, no, <laughs> this is politics. Uh, we know how much uh, politicians argue on both sides of the, you know, on both sides of the deck there. And with something as big as cryptocurrency, it's going to be no different. The bill seems like it will be getting a vote in the committee next week. The first step of many uh, in getting the bill to the president's desk. Some Democrats, largely younger, have expressed interest in this legislation, but not all. We are starting to see engagement uh, from consumer groups defending the SEC's position that legislation is unnecessary, which is kind of ridiculous. Recall, recall the SEC's position differs from other Biden regulators such as the Treasury uh, and CFTC. So interesting that they chose the SEC's side. So that is very interesting, too. It's not, uh, you know, Democratic across the board with the same views on this. Uh, Treasury, CFTC, also Democratic led, but they have a very different view on cryptocurrencies. Ron Hammond continues by saying it is also interesting to note that defending the regulation by enforcement approach is odd considering 2022 wasn't a good year for crypto consumers. The Hill also understood the timing of Binance, a bad actor, and Coinbase being so close to each other as being politically motivated. So to be clear, between the House uh, Agriculture and Financial Services Committees, there seems to be several Democrats who are looking to support legislation. Politics will determine if it is both bills or just stable coins. Market structure is unique, as it is the only House effort on that topic. It is politically tough to buck your own party leadership in Congress, which is why uh, Waters is a key force. Uh, however, it uh, it does not all rely on her, and we've seen some bills where many uh, sorry where many yeah where many members go against leadership to support a common sense bill, and I think that's what we need something that uh, relies on some sort of common sense. I feel like common sense is uh, fleeting more and more every single day. The best example he gives here uh, is this safe banking, the marijuana banking bill. Republicans were in the minority that go around, and while uh, McHenry didn't support, a hefty amount of younger Republicans join all the Democrats in supporting it. So. You know, you're not going to necessarily see a unanimous vote across the board. And he gives this as an example. This gave the bill legs in the general house vote and Senate. And I mean, crypto should not be a bipartisan issue. Uh, I mean, it is going to benefit everybody equally. So it's interesting to see the nuts and bolts here. Let me just finish this off. Uh, Ron Hammond says, you know, there is still a lot in flux. So stay tuned for updates in the coming days, regardless of your view on crypto. Democrat Wiley Nichols said it best. Whether you love crypto or hate crypto, you should support market structure legislation. Inaction is not an option. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Well, I mean, for us, maybe an action is not, maybe it's an option. I mean, if I could go back to the bull run of 2017, I would be happy, uh, you know, not dealing with, uh, you know, all the factors that I'm dealing with today. Uh, nevertheless, guys, it is a, uh, a necessary evil, I think, if we want to continue trading cryptocurrency in the capacity that we are. So wanted to thank Ron Hammond there. And of course, Jeremy Hogan for initially, uh, you know, tweeting this out because crypto's here to stay, guys. The XRP verdict has gotten XRP moving and, uh, you know, I'm really, really just happy that we're seeing this kind of a move, not, uh, you know, we're not what we've seen in the past for other coins where, you know, you see this initial FOMO pump and uh, I was talking about this the other day, you see the initial FOMO pump and then it kind of peters out. And then on this leg here, you would have seen it go further, further down and then maybe do something like this and, you know, just kind of go back to where it went originally we did not see that this time around xrp has maintained new support okay support that is up uh roughly 50 percent from the former low that we saw before the news came out so guys this is all good this is positive news now we're seeing xrp moving up so where is the next target going to be and where should we be focusing our attention on now not saying this is going to happen, but Francis Hunt here on Twitter posted this video, a price prediction for XRP upward of $16 per coin. Guys, listen to this. 
Let's go to the XRP. Remember friends, this is the first little move that's going to make you a very happy boy. We've been calling XRP, calling XRP, calling XRP consistently and this is the move. That $16.75 with that stop loss on this tiny little fractal, it looks tiny from up top there, that tiny little fractal is going to be your break and entry into a far bigger one that is giving you a risk reward of 683. The beginning of a journey of a third high. Go and look at those YouTube. So many people are off the timers. We said we need a third high that will run a dollar ten before it eases a wee bit. That is going to set you up for life potentially if you know how to play it right. This is a bull market. The alts are coming. We need a third high out of this guy. It could and still go higher. So a lot of information to digest there from Francis Hunt, but he did say a $16.75 XRP is not out of the question. Now, if I bring XRP back on the daily chart, guys, wow, um, it is already poised to move up, continue to move up. So I have no doubt that uh, we will see new highs. Uh, now it's just a matter of how high will we go? What he was saying was he was basically bringing this down here and he was talking about a level of about a dollar ten so breaking through this level here here let me i think he was pretty much bringing this trend line down here uh dollar ten would essentially bring us up to roughly here give or take okay so again i got xr whoops again i got xrp on the weekly here and uh you guys can see a dollar ten breaking up above this support level that we saw way back in February of 2018, that first correction after the dump of all time high for XRP. Now, if we can get above that, and what he's suggesting is, uh, you know, it would happen somewhere in and around here, getting up above that level, bouncing and uh, holding supports before that next move up. Guys, from there, a $16.75 XRP is not out of the question. But first things first, though, we got to get up above a dollar and ten cents. And I mean, you know, even just taking a look at this fractal pattern that, uh, you know, has been irritating the XRP community for a very long time now. You guys can see XRP settling down at $16.75 per coin is certainly not unreasonable. We've seen it in the past if we calculate this measured move. So we're seeing it in the current fractal pattern. We're seeing a bullish momentum for XRP. That's all positive. And considering where we're at, guys, all the partnerships, remember this fractal pattern was from a time very, very long ago when XRP did not have the partnerships, did not have, uh, you know, the support, did not have nearly as many people in the XRP community either. So that is, uh, you know, something else we have to consider. $16.75 give or take. That could theoretically just be the beginning of a launching off point until we finally hit an all-time high for XRP once Bitcoin reaches its top. Now, I'm not here to predict what that's going to be, but we also have to consider the macro market move as well. So, I mean, it would be foolish not to take profits at $16. And uh, to be honest, even sooner than that, this is why we have to keep our thumb on the pulse of the market to see, uh, you know, all the factors unraveling all at once. This is when we pounce. This is when we pull the trigger. Once we have a better sense of where the market's going. Don't forget, guys, Francis Hunt was the same guy who said this months ago. Listen to this. So there's going to be a lot of money to be made here. When we start talking about like XRP, you know, you, I you think say it's that going to go not... up immensely. So, in, and, of and course. should you take the profits? Yes, you should. XRP is going to go up immensely. Should you take the profits? Well, if we do see $16.75 per coin, I think it would be foolish not to at least take some profits off the table. This is why I have the Patreon guys and making it affordable for everybody to follow. I'm going to be letting you guys in on my trades, including my XRP trades, following the trends. And I'm going to be telling you on the day when I'm executing these trades, I'm going to be posting videos minutes after they occur. So here we go. Are we on our way up to $16.75 per coin? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.